you have to be cognizant also of the parties that you'll or the tokens that you'll participate in because I mean, let's not forget the 2017 era where ICOs were a thing, were a big hit, and there were a lot of scammy projects and escapist or fly-by-night crypto projects that really caused the negative outlook towards crypto for a time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Passive Income Show with me, your host, Carl D. And tonight, we have a very interesting topic. You know, normally, we would have somebody who's uh, more experienced, older, and we learn from them. But tonight, I'm very excited because we're going to learn from a different generation, from what I call the Generation Crypto, mga millennials. Now, they're so comfortable with this cryptocurrency world because they're born into it. The first guest, and when I first met her, she was already in this space, and I have, am totally clueless what this cryptocurrency is all about. She's been, in, she's been uh, into international, both local and international projects and exchanges. She's an active member of the Ethereum meetups all the way in 2018. Pa and has been working as a community manager for ThorChain, an international DeFi project, and was also the former PR director of Bitsy last 2020. And our second guest, he's also in this crypto space. He's the chief marketing officer at Open Journal. I personally don't know what Open Journal is, but I am very in interested to learn what it's all about. He is a licensed portfolio manager at Buhawe Investment Management. Um, our speaker began his career in corporate management initially in marketing and sales for the world's largest multinational food and beverage corporation. And without further ado, let us all uh, give a warm welcome to Bell Laurel and Joseph Singson. Good evening, Carl, and good evening to all the viewers. Hey, Carl. Hi, everyone. Maraming salamat. Good evening. Let's begin. Okay, Belle, take it away. Ladies first. <laughs> right. So for airdrops, we wanted to see the product market fit. So in, in order to do that, we had to create events. And of course, right now we're doing webinars and it's it's tougher, right? Used to It used to be like weekly meetups. Sometimes every three days there would be a meetup and you build a community from there. And that's how we met people throughout the industry and we all grew together. So from there, it was a way to like acquire members and have them try out the system and try the try the platform and see for themselves. And as a way to incentivize them, airdrops were laying out for for the community members so that they they get a they get a feel of the token and yeah the opportunities that are in the ecosystem. So yeah. Yeah, I think on the topic of airdrops. These are quite relevant, especially for new projects or new coins coming out, given that, let's say, for example, if you're not in the top um, 30 or 40 market cap for crypto, there's a big chance that majority of people around the world don't know you exist, have no idea what your project is, mm -hmm. don't know what your white paper is, haven't really studied it to that full extent. And I think airdrops which are a way of giving that token away to people who subscribe to that community. It's really a recruitment strategy to be able to get people interested, as what Bell mentioned, in their ecosystem. And the way that it is mechanized is that you can check out a coin market cap, for example, the coin website. Gecko. It's coin more Gecko. accurate. Sure. <laughs> well, both of those, right? Coin Gecko, coin market cap, and then sign up to their mailing list. And every other day, sometimes even every day, there's an email about different airdrops of different cryptos and tokens. Mm -hmm. And there are respective instructions on how you can claim your free reward. You have to be cognizant also of the 
parties that you'll or the tokens that you'll participate in because i mean let's not forget the 2017 era where icos were a thing were a big hit and there were a lot of scammy projects and escapist or fly-by-night crypto projects that really caused the negative outlook towards crypto for a time um ibig ba sabihin ng airdrop parang layman's term free cryptocurrency Yes, there's specific cryptocurrency as a way to participate and hook people to get in the ecosystem. And then eventually, what's good about it is you're taking that risk. If that cryptocurrency increases the price value, then you're part of that early adopter nuance, right? You're you're already part of that growth. And of course, you'll earn from that once you convert it to fiat. Okay, so airdrop is number one. What? Mm -hmm. How else can we crypto side hustle? I think community management. A lot of people, a lot of projects need volunteers. And sometimes when you're in the space, they want you to know about the token, know about the project itself. And you can ask the moderators or the team itself if you can participate. That's how I started. I asked first, ask and you shall receive, right? So I asked yeah. and I learned, I, re I read up on their project and I was able to contribute to the new, to the incoming members about the coin and how I can like provide information and I was compensated for that. <laughs> when you were starting Bell and Joseph, did you get remarks from your family or your friends? What are you doing, uh, Bell? Why don't you get a real job? <laughs> did you get those comments? <laughs> yes. And I, I find it funny now that I met my mother last week and then she was asking me about Axie. And I'm not even mad. She doesn't know Bitcoin. She doesn't understand Ethereum, but she but she kind of has an inkling towards Axie. So it's it's strange. Yeah, I also got a lot of you know flack from you know family at that time or friends or even in the academe when I was taking my masters. Like people generally were very skeptical about blockchain, cryptocurrency, altcoins. What's going on? It was like taboo to a large extent and maybe even arguably a bit until now mm -hmm. play to earn simply is there are certain platforms or games in which you can play and earn certain tokens and cryptocurrency the most popular in southeast asia and in the philippines being Axie infinity and i'm sure a lot of people very mat matunogyan on facebook Twitter, Instagram, etc. For the right reasons, right? Um, it's really an, another avenue for the layman or for uh, white collar workers or students to really have another stream of income when they play the game. Mm -hmm. But um, I won't get too much into the mechanics or the specifics, but there are a lot of nuances and variables to consider before throwing money out to play the game and buy your uh, axes or the characters you need to play the game. Like, you need to research about how you can earn from the game, how much time can I put in right. on a daily or weekly basis to play this. It's also largely contingent on the price action of certain coins, right. AXS and SLP. Right. And the general just journey to be able to mechanize that it's not as simple as okay i'll download it i'll put some money into play and then bam i'll earn like 1000 pesos per day so it's a process mm -hmm. to play the game you need three axes or three cards or characters think of it like pokemon if you're familiar or neopets um you need three um characters to play and the estimated cost average cost to start playing the game is around 40 to 70,000 pesos. Two oh, weeks wow. ago, it was 30K. Yeah, so as the price of the SLP token and AXS go up, mm -hmm. the cost to play the game and buy your axes goes up as well. 